Now, I want to turn to the very real effects of Trump's anti-media rhetoric. I want you to take a listen to this voicemail sent to New York Times reporter Ken Vogel. You are the enemy of the people. And although the pen might be mightier than the sword, the pen is not mightier than the AK-47. And unfortunately, that's not the only one. This past week, a California man named Robert Chain was arrested and charged for making at least 14 threatening phone calls to the Boston Globe, allegedly saying things like, we are going to shoot you effers in the head. Shoot Effie, last one of you. And you're the enemy of the people, and we're going to kill every effing one of you. And as long as you keep attacking the president, the duly elected president of the United States, in the continuation of your treasonous and seditious acts, I will continue to threat, harass, and annoy the Boston Globe. Now, up to 20 firearms and ammunition were removed from Chain's home. And this comes just two months after a crazed gunman killed five reporters and editors at the Capitol Gazette in Annapolis, Maryland. When questioned by reporters outside a courthouse about a free press, this is how Chain responded. Do you have a problem with the free press in America? There is no free press in America. April, I want to come to you on this one because it's the subject of part of your book, the escalating threats against journalists and what people don't understand how real the threats against reporters can be and whether it's getting worse in your estimation. It is getting worse, John. It is getting worse. There's collateral damage. You know, it affects not only the reporter, but the people who are around the reporter. Um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this, and I'm just going to put it as, as simply as I can. I blame the president for this. Sarah Huckabee Sanders had a chance to pull back, saying that we're the enemy of the people. She didn't. She just talked about things personally that affected her and the president, to include the fact that a comedian came there and said some things about her. We didn't do that. The comedian did that. And the president, he's had a chance. I mean, the New York Times uh, uh, leaders or, or, or bosses came and talked to the president about this. So many people have talked to him. Even his own daughter have said, has said that the press is not the enemy. This president has got to stop it. He realizes he's keenly aware of what's going on and what's happening. You know, the death threats have got to stop. We are a part of, of the Constitution, free and fair, uh, uh, independent press. The First Amendment, not the second, not the third, the first. And a lot of people want to listen to this president who they say is a patriot, but he's not standing by the oath of office to follow the Constitution, the First Amendment. Not only that, some of these people who are making threats must have been asleep during government class or civics class because we are a part of this country, the, the pillars of this country. And the problem is, if you don't like the reports, call the bosses. If you don't like the reports, make a noise on Twitter, do what you have to do. But to try to kill someone for writing a story that you don't like because there is fact in the story, there's a problem. And yes, I do write about it. And I write about the attacks on me and, and trying to disparage me and, and attack my credibility because they were fearful of some of the things that I knew that they were doing. And when I report, I speak the truth. And I have Republican sources who are in the inner circle who give up the information. I don't go in a, a, a office and go through a, a, a file cabinet. I'm given the information. Why? Because they're whistleblowers and this administration does not like it.